Welcome everybody. A casual passerby may say, oh look, they're unveiling a memorial to a RAF pilot who was shot down and killed in the war. It must be the RAF. Oh, I know, it might be the Imperial War Museum. Or, I know, it's the lottery. <laughs> it's none of those things. It's the Shoreham Aircraft Museum. And this is the 13th of many similar <coughs> memorials run by Jeff Nutkins and a small bunch of volunteers. Unfortunately in Britain today only good things are done by ordinary people and that includes you because you are here today so thank you all very much indeed and I'll now hand over to the Reverend Noble. Thanks Edward. Yeah, okay. Sorry about the weather, folks. I did pray, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> obviously not a holy man. Okay. <laughs> I was going to start with a prayer and uh, just be silent for a minute. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we've gathered here in Stansted today to remember Colin Francis, who, alongside many other brave men and women, gave up his young life to save this country, Great Britain from the rule and tyranny of evil. As we stand together in this place, we give you thanks for the self-sacrifice, bravery and courage of this young man who was killed in the service of his country and who gave his life for the cause of world peace. Amen. Amen. Over to Rick. Ladies and gentlemen, today is a very special day and one that I know I will never forget. RAF Kenley and number 253 Squadron are forever in my mind. My father, Teddy Peacock Edwards, was himself a Battle of Britain pilot who was on 254, 253 Squadron at Kenley during the battle. But it is in the name of Colin Francis that we are gathered here today. Colin Dunson Francis of Stoke Dabernon, Surrey, joined 253 at Kurt Don Lindsay in Lincolnshire. And after a spell in Scotland, he arrived with his squadron at Kenley on the 29th of August, 1940. The Battle of Britain was in full swing and Kenley was at the epicentre of the battle. The 30th of August was to be no exception. And for Colin Francis, his very first sortie in the Battle of Britain on the morning of 30th of August could not have been a more challenging experience. He was in a three aircraft formation led by the squadron commander, Tom Lee. Scrambled to join others from the squadron, engaging a large formation of bombers with a fighter escort of some 30 ME-109s. They quickly found themselves in the middle of the fight. At the conclusion, Tom Lee could not establish with Colin and his hurricane. He was in fact seen disappearing into a cloud. And there's even a story that he was not just disappearing, but he was singing Waltzing Matilda at the same time. <laughs> oh, he was posted as missing. In Tom Deeves' words, Colin was a damn fine kid and full of guts. He was 19 years old. Mm. It wasn't until 1981, over 40 years later, that his aircraft was found in a field on Cold Harbour Farm in this village of Stansted. The aircraft was excavated with the body of Colin Francis still strapped into the cockpit. He was buried with full military honours in the Brookwood Military Cemetery. Colin Francis was a fighter pilot. He was a very brave young man, like all Battle of Britain pilots. He is a hero. He was one of the few. They saved this country. He would never be forgotten. And it is so appropriate that we're here today to help take that memory into eternity. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Um, good afternoon. Um, I feel in some senses uh, a bit like the bridesmaid um, following Rick Peacock Edwards. I did not know he was going to be here today. Uh, we've worked together for 40 years and the only time that I have done what is 
captured by the poem I'm about to read was in an aircraft being flown by Rick Peacock Edwards. So we actually flew together in a cat in a uh, air defence tornado uh, out of RAF Coningsby, which is where the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight is. And we flew, um, he flew, I sat there and uh, looked frightened. Um, <laughs> this was in 1986. Oh, wow. So, and I, I have seen him obviously many times since, but it's the first time we have actually uh, been to um, an event of this sort where both of us have had some uh, recollection or uh, an understanding of the various points of issue. The poem I'm about to read, High Flight, um, by John McGee, uh, many of you would have come across before. What is notable was that he was also 19 years old when he wrote this poem, and he died shortly afterwards. So we're really memorising, remembering in many ways, uh, a whole uh, cadre of people between the ages of about 18 and 23, because that was the age of the people who were dying uh, during the Battle of Britain. I have to say, on, on both sides of the battle. Anyway, let me move on to John McGee's poem, High Flight. Oh, I've slipped the surly bonds of earth and danced the skies on laughter-silvered wings. Sunward I've climbed and joined the tumbling mirth of sun-split clouds and done a hundred things. You've not dreamed of, wheeled and soared and swung high in the sunlit silence. Hovering there, I chased the shouting wind along and flung my eager craft through footless halls of air. Up, up the long, delirious, burning blue, I've topped the windswept heights with easy grace, where never lark nor eagle ever flew. And while, with silent lifting mind, I trod the high, untrespassed sanctity of space, put out my hand and touched the face of God. It's a very solitary activity, being a 19-year-old, I think, flying as a flight pilot. Thank you very much for listening. So let us remember before God and commend to his sure keeping Pilot Officer Colin Francis, along with all those who have died for their country, for those whom we knew and those whom we never knew. We thank you for the peace that Colin and his fellow pilots and crew of the RAF brought us through their bravery and self-sacrifice. We pray this day, in this place, for peace in our time. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them.
Well, thank you, gentlemen. That's great, and it's a lovely state. I'm sure you'll enjoy. Everyone will enjoy looking at it, and uh, it'll be a very special place. So, thank you so much for doing that today, and uh, we're we, we thrilled about it. Actually, thank you. Thank you for being here. So, we're going to. Um, I'm just going to say a closing prayer, and uh, after we have um, the uh, viewer. God, grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the king, the commonwealth, and all peoples, peace and concord, and to all his servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Jeff and all the staff at Shoreham Aircraft Museum, just want to say thank you for turning out in what, let's face it, could have been a better day. Even if it was dry, it would have been better. Unfortunately, it's obviously stopped the hurricane from flying, um, which was to have been a highlight of the ceremony. But uh, hey ho, God, we plan and God destroys, as they say. <laughs> as our Vice Marshal, Hobart said earlier, this is number 13 on our list. Uh, it's a shame really that it is such an extensive list, but while it exists, the memorial project 
for the museum will carry on. And unfortunately nowadays, we are no longer in a position to have signing events. There's only one Battle of Britain pilot left, 104 years old, still going strong, living in Ireland. But even with bomber command crews now, by definition, they're all in their 90s and it's just not fair to ask them to attend signing events anymore. So we rely solely on admissions to the museum and the revenue generated by the tea room. Uh, please, come along, yep. give us a visit, put a few quid in the tin, and no doubt we can do another one of these under better conditions, maybe next year. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you all for turning out on such a, a rotten day. Uh, just a uh, final word, you're all very welcome to join us at the, uh, at the pub um, for a small reception and uh, lots of RAF chat. So do come along and join us. Thank you. Thank you.